Hello and welcome to my From the Air series. This video is about predominantly the Loch Nagar Crater. It's on the western front in the Somme area near the village of La Boiselle, between the two features known to the British Army as Mash Valley and Sausage Valley. The blue lines on this map are the British trenches and you can see my takeoff point is just behind the British front line and the red mar markings are the German trenches. The little star-like features in between uh, the British and the German lines are other craters, far smaller than the Loch Nagar one. On the 1st of July 1916, at 7.28 in the morning, the British Army detonated a huge amount of explosives, as you can see here, directly under a strong point in the German front line. The British then at 7.30 left their trenches, advancing from the direction I'm filming in now. As we take off here, I'm just behind the British front line. German front line is directly ahead, and the British front line would have ran somewhere approximately halfway through this dark green field, running left to right. On the 1st of July 1916, the British troops would have simply climbed out of their trenches at 7.30 and marched across no man's land in the face of withering German machine gun fire. Many thousands died right in these fields here. We're now looking towards La Boiselle itself, and the British front line runs from left to right, uh, from just before the village, where the trees first start there is the main road from Albert to Bapoum. And as we gain a bit of altitude and pan to the right, you can almost see shadows in the ground as to where the British front line was. It's easy to see where the German front line was because we can see the crater there in the distance. That is on a German strong point, the projected out in front. And now in the distance, you can, you can very clearly see the markings of German trenches in the fields. This land from left to right, which was no man's land, would have contained the bodies of many thousands of British dead on the 1st of July. We're now starting to advance towards the German front lines. British front lines being almost directly beneath us now. And the crater starts to take on a huge significance, for this is the, where the German front lines projected outwards into no man's land, and that meant their machine guns could not just fire across no man's land, but also sideways down its whole length. That is why this area was so important, uh, and great effort was put into placing these explosives underground beneath this strong point. The crater measures some 300 feet across and about 90 feet deep and it's now in private ownership. For many years it was simply abandoned and was in danger of being lost through filled up with rubbish etc. But Mr Denning purchased it and has now created a place where people can go and remember those perhaps from their own families that were lost in the terrible battles of the First World War. And hopefully now it will be preserved forevermore. On the 1st of July 1916 and on the 11th of November, which is Armistice Day, services are held here as acts of remembrance. It's the largest man-made crater, certainly from the First World War and quite possibly of all time. There's actually two sets of explosives set as the tunnel got near to where they wanted it to be, it branched off in two directions and the final chambers, which were packed with explosives, were some 60 feet apart, but detonated simultaneously. If you look at the car parking spaces on the road, it gives you some idea as to perspective as to how big this crater is, how many cars you could actually drop in the bottom of it. German front lines to the right, British to the left, 
and that road roughly where the main front line was for the Germans the British front lines are out of view across the left as we pan up now we're starting to look towards the west I filmed this quite late in the evening La Boiselle is quite clear there and we've actually switched through 180 degrees now right in the middle you can see the shadows of the German frontline trenches there looking towards the Freecourt area and back to our crater now For someone like myself who was very interested in the First World War, uh, other than many cemeteries and monuments, there's not a great deal to see anymore here. This crater, uh, you've got one or two others, and the outlines of some trenches at Beaumont Hamel, and that will be a feature in another of my From the Air series. But several craters, are not quite as big as this one, but a, a huge size, have been lost now to history, simply filled in over the years as farmers reclaimed the land. So we swing round now, we're looking, this would be the direction the Germans were facing. British front lines would be directly ahead, just off camera. The advancing British infantry coming from the direction we're looking as they neared the crater they would have simply split and gone round the sides of it to try and capture the German trenches that would have been behind it. But there are accounts of uh, many wounded sheltering within the crater. What we're seeing now is the no what's known as no man's land directly between the British and German lines. And on the 1st of July that would have been line upon line of, of wounded and dead soldiers. 60,000 wounded on the first day, of which 20,000 killed. This next part of my film was filmed the next morning, so we've got the sun from a different angle. And you can see the direction I take off in now towards La Boiselle. We're over No Man's Land, and we're going to have a look at some of the minor craters that are in No Man's Land. And on those trench maps are marked by little stars. The reason why the main crater, Loch Nagar, is not on those trench maps is because they're dated from June of 1916, a week or so before the crater was detonated. But many of these little minor craters in no man's land uh, were detonated through 1915 and early 1916. And from the map you can see there's just quite a large number. On the horizon in the distance is Averley Wood, and to the right almost just on film you've got the white of a villa cemetery on the horizon you can just make out the Teepval memorial mash valley is just the other side of the village british front lines running to the left of that road uh, going into the distance parallel mash valley was no man's land and you've got a villas to the right right at the top right hand corner and no man's land here was some one mile across. Here we're seeing craters now on this side of La Boiselle. No man's land here was quite narrow in comparison to Mash Valley. The German front lines ran just to the right of these craters through where these houses are now and when it gets to the main road <coughs> it turns to the right to the north. We've now turned round for 180 degrees and we're looking back across no man's land towards the crater. We're literally directly above no man's land. German front lines to the left of that main road and the British somewhere to the right, probably running halfway through that dark green field. The German front lines projecting out in front exactly where the crater is. And the British soldiers would have advanced from right to left.
On the 1st of July, the sides of this crater would have been far steeper. Uh, contemporary photographs show it almost as vertical. But of course, over the years, due to erosion, uh, the land just slides down. But it's still an impressive sight, and if ever you get the opportunity to go there, you should do so. We're looking towards Freecourt there, and we switch back round again now, looking back to Le Boiselle, crater on the right. We're roughly now above the British front line. Look how open the land is. Imagine British soldiers advancing in broad daylight. A lot of equipment on their backs. They couldn't crouch or stoop, couldn't run. They simply advanced forward in long lines, line after line. My grandfather was one of them. He was one of the fortunate ones, not only surviving the Battle of the Somme, but also the entire war. This film is my tribute to him and all his comrades, those who served. If you've enjoyed this short film, found it informative and would like to know more, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I filmed this during two days in August 2016 and I have quite a bit more footage and will be posting videos on Beaumont Hamel, upon Serre, where the Sheffield Pals advance from what is now known as Sheffield Wood, the Newfoundland Park, and also close-ups of the Teatval Memorial. It's my intention to film other areas of the Western Front, and I will post them onto YouTube. Thank you very much for your interest, and I hope you've enjoyed this.